episode two of the new Apple TV Plus series, Manhunt, titled Postmortem, is finished up. And I'm here to once again give you my thoughts from a U.S. history teacher on what we saw on this episode of Manhunt. And I have to say right away, I think I was a little easy on the show back when I reviewed episode one because episode two, we are starting to get some historical errors that I believe take away from the show a bit. I said on episode one when I reviewed that, that some of this with historical license I can live with because, you know, they're they're using it with the narrative they're telling, in this case, telling the story from the perspective of Edwin Stanton and, you know, just having some, some license over the events to try to make their narrative flow with the story they're telling. That being said, The Manhunt for John Wilkes Booth is one of the most compelling stories in the history of the United States. It's one of my favorite things to teach as a U.S. history teacher. And as I'm watching this series develop, I'm starting to wonder why some of the story is changing. And frankly, I'm getting a little worried with some of these storylines that are that are cropping up and uh, where they could be headed, because I think there's a difference between making minor tweaks to a story to make it more engaging for an audience watching on television versus changing history and actually taking away from the story or maybe confusing the audience as to what the real story is, which in turn will make the work of historians even harder when they fact check stuff like this. So... Episode 2 had some glaring errors, no question about it. I'm going to get into it here in a second. But right away, I want to get into some positives before we get too negative on what we saw on Episode 2. So, we got the first portrayal of Andrew Johnson, the new president taken over upon Lincoln's death. And I have to say, Andrew Johnson's role is played phenomenally by the actor. So Glenn Morshower takes the role of Andrew Johnson, and he plays it to a T. I love the interaction in the hotel between Johnson and Stanton because it hints at this turmoil between the two men, which is going to eventually come to a head with the impeachment of Andrew Johnson, the first American president impeached. Now, he was not ejected from the White House. The Senate saved him by just one single vote in the Senate trial, but he does become the first president impeached, and that is due to what happens between him and Edwin Stanton. More on that maybe later in the series. I don't know if we'll get into that in the final episode or not, but we we are seeing that these two have a, you know, not a great relationship, and I liked the interaction we saw between them in, in the hotel room, and I thought, again, like I said, the role of Andrew Johnson was played extremely well. To me, maybe the highlight of episode two was Andrew Johnson. We also got in episode two the opening of the series, the main title for the first time, uh, the sequence with the music and the images and everything. I have to say they did a really good job here in recreating a lot of the historical pictures and photos of, of some of the characters in this story. I think the title theme is nice as well. So I did enjoy the opening Uh, We did not see that in episode one. They show the bed in the Peterson home where Lincoln died. And the bed is empty, but there's these pillows that have blood from Lincoln's head on it. and And the blood kind of grows during the credits. Nice creative touch. A little dark to be sure, but I like that creatively. So the Mary Sims character is loosely based on the real Mary Sims, but... This portrayal of her is not accurate to what really happened with Mary Sims, who left the mud farm in 1864. But there really was a Mary Sims enslaved upon the mud farm for around four years, and she did testify at the conspirators' trial that we'll probably see, we'll surely see, portrayed later in the series. And she talked about her treatment as an enslaved person on the mud farm. But, you know, much more dramatic fictional role here for her in this series with the shaving of John Wilkes Booth and we see her backstory a little bit and they portray her as someone who was uh, free, she who had run away from slavery and become free and she was living in Pennsylvania and there's this scene where the slave catchers come to, to take her back and we see that she was put back into slavery. This 
we don't think that this really jives with the real Mary Sims story. In fact, it's probably it's probably inspired by a couple of different real life people. Uh, but it, it adds to what reality was like for enslaved people during this era. And if you if you actually escaped slavery, which was a small, small fraction of people, the chance that you could be recaptured and forced to go back into slavery because of the passing of the Fugitive Slave Act, among other things. And so this, even though fictional to the real Mary Sims story, I had no problem with because it shows a reality for thousands of people uh, in the United States during that era, and it's it's effective in in the messaging that you're trying to get across. Mary Sims at the trial also talked about some disloyal statements she had overheard Dr. Mudd say when she was at his farm in regards to the Union versus the Confederacy and him being a supporter of the Confederacy. And obviously for her, a former enslaved person was incredibly brave for her to do that. So they're playing a little bit into the real Mary Sims without being completely honest with who she was. She's, I feel like she is a composite of multiple different people in this series, which I think is, is fine. I thought the scene between her and John Wilkes Booth where she's shaving John Wilkes and she accidentally cuts him and we see the racism with John Wilkes Booth was effective. Of course, John Wilkes Booth, a strong supporter of the Confederacy, was extremely racist and, uh, in fact, a shame on his entire family even before he assassinated President Lincoln. Basically, uh, the Booth family were staunch Unionists, except for John Wilkes, who they pretty much excommunicated because of his staunch support for the Confederacy, his strong beliefs on slavery, and what the Confederacy was fighting for. And I thought that this scene illustrated well the racism of John Wilkes Booth and the dynamic here with Mary Sims was really really interesting and effective. I mentioned the photographs that are in the title sequence, the opening of the episode. We also see some recreated historical photographs on the bulletin board that Edwin Stanton has over at the War Department. And you can tell that they've they've paid close detail to the originals. The background's not quite right. If I'll, I'll try to do a side by side here in the video. I mean, but the poses between what we're seeing with the actors, you know, playing Lewis Powell and playing George Atzerat are pretty close to how they looked originally. And and also there's pictures of John Wilkes Booth, like the more posed photographs of him that we have up on the board. And that is pretty close to accurate as to what the originals looked like. Same with uh, David Harold, And you see him kind of like standing next to this small desk and... I mean, it's not exact, but the pose, the books on the desk, it's pretty close to how the original looks. So when I saw those pop up here in the series, I appreciated that because I'm so familiar with the historical photos. And you can tell that uh, they paid close attention to that and tried to recreate these elements of history. We see the arrest of Lewis Powell at Mary Surratt's boarding house in this episode. And they've changed the timeline here because... A lot happens on April 15th in this episode, which is the day after Lincoln's assassination. In reality, Powell was arrested at Mary Surratt's boarding house a couple of days later, not the very next day. And also the time is wrong. So in the episode, he arrives at Mary Surratt's home just as authorities are there. And uh, he claims, you know, a manual laborer who's there to do some work for Mary Surratt, who doesn't recognize him and the, the authorities do not, or she claims to not recognize him and the authorities don't believe him and they arrest him. And here in the episode, there's this scuffle. Uh, but it's again, it's happening in the morning hours. And in real life, he arrived late in the evening of April 17th. It was very dark outside. You know, again, a couple of days difference. They're trying to progress the story, so that's fine. One thing I did note is that Powell arrives to Surratt's home here in Manhunt wearing his coat that still has blood all over it, which is not real. Of course, he wasn't wearing that around D.C. Uh, he actually ditched the coat. He was not wearing that in real life when he arrived at Mary Surratt's home. So an error there to be sure. Um, they have they have Powell also wearing like a, a shirt on his head <laughs> as he arrives at the home. And in reality, it's true. He, he had made a hat out of like part of his sleeve uh, when he had arrived at Mary Surratt's home, but he wasn't wearing like what you see in the episode here, whereas this whole like shirt is hanging off his head. That's that is not accurate, but he did have a a makeshift hat on when he arrived and was arrested 
at the boarding home. Not April 15th, but April 17th. There's some interactions between John Wilkes Booth and David Harold when they're still at Dr. Mudd's farm. And Booth is insistent. He wants to get to Richmond, which in reality would not make much sense because Booth knew Richmond had fell to the Union by now. There would be no purpose in getting to Richmond, Virginia. He was, of course, trying to escape to the Confederacy. Richmond just makes him kind of look like a fool. Uh, but eventually what we see is uh, Mud and Harold go to nearby Bryanstown to get feed for their horses. And uh, this really did happen. The two of them did go to Bryantown. And uh, Dr. Mud stayed there and he was he was uh, shopping for his wife. Whereas David Harold ended up scurrying back to Dr. Mud's home because they saw Union soldiers and he wanted to get out of there. Uh, in the episode, what we see is David Harold retreats back to the home when he sees a sign that says horse feed is no longer going to be sold there. If you remember from uh, episode one, somehow Edwin Stanton has got them to stop selling horse feed all over the country. Uh, when Again, in reality, that did not happen. But that's what gets David Harold to turn around and, and go back to the farm because He's not going to be able to get feed for the horses, but that's not the true story. He really ran off because he saw authorities, which I think dramatically would have been better than the way they shot this here in the series. Uh, him and him and Dr. Mudd in reality had gone to Bryantown, but they were looking for a cart that Harold could use to haul around his friend, John Wilkes Booth, who had broken his leg. That was the reason they had gone to town, uh, not to get feed for the horses. There's a scene with David Harold where he meets John Surratt Jr. for the first time. And this is set with David Harold as a pharmacist clerk, which really was his real job. They, this is supposed to be a year earlier, and, and John Surratt meets him, and he's he's trying to recruit David Harold for something big. This would be the kidnapping plot that the men had before the plot to kill Lincoln. Um, this does not match up with the timeline. There was no kidnapping plot a year earlier. Uh, John Surratt Jr. didn't even know John Wilkes Booth a year earlier. So that's off, but they get some of the stuff right, you know, that David Harold really was a pharmacist clerk. And within the scene, we see David Harold kind of look at this poster on the wall of uh, John Wilkes Booth, and he realizes that's who Surratt wants him to meet, and he's kind of like awestruck that he's going to meet this famous actor. And I'm sure that is true. That was Harold's real reaction when he got to meet Booth for the first time. John Surratt actually met John Wilkes Booth in December of 1864, and the guy who introduced him to Booth was none other than Dr. Samuel Mudd. We do know that David Harold had met John Wilkes Booth earlier than this. Uh, David Harold met him backstage at Ford's Theater, I believe in 1863, so Harold actually knew Booth before Surratt did. I said in the episode one review that I thought maybe they were going a little easy on Dr. Mudd and that, you know, he was definitely guilty. He knew the conspirators. He was involved in the kidnapping plot uh, before all of this went down. But in episode two, we definitely see that they do, to be fair, lean into him being guilty uh, and that he do he clearly knows these guys and he's involved in the plot to help the Confederacy. And so luckily for me, my statements in my episode one review that they're, they're being too easy on Dr. Mudd and maybe showing him in a better light. That didn't prove to be the case. We see him in a very negative light in episode two. That being said, at the end of this episode, we see John Surratt at Dr. Mudd's home. And this is supposed to be, uh, I believe April 16th. This has never happened. John Surratt was nowhere close to Maryland or Washington, D.C. when the assassination happened. We also saw earlier him creeping around the Stanton residence. And this is one of those historical errors that really bothers me. The guy wasn't there. This, this really serves no purpose if you're trying to tell the real story. And I almost leapt out of my chair at this point. I was so angry. Like, what? what is John Surratt doing outside the home of Edwin Stanton? And what is he doing staying at the home of Dr. Mudd after John Wilkes Booth left? Never happened. He was up in upstate New York by this point on his way to Canada. There are other historical errors in this episode. As I said on the first review, I'm not going to go through every single little historical error. This would make these episodes of... 
my reviews an hour long plus. I don't want to do that. I want to give you some more broad thoughts and some of the bigger historical errors that bothered me. Uh, and so hopefully this helps you. Maybe it gets you interested to look into the real story a little bit. I do want to say that uh, I'll continue doing these. I did like the positive feedback that you guys wanted to see these reviews keep coming. So I will keep producing them. Um, I'm also going to tell you that I am currently scripting and almost ready to shoot my full explanation of the manhunt for John Wilkes Booth and what happened during that almost two week period. I've been wanting to make this video for years. I got lots and lots of requests to do a video on the manhunt for John Wilkes Booth when my Abraham Lincoln assassination video here on the channel blew up a couple of years ago. And I've been working on it here and there. I wanted to do the story justice with this series airing right now. I need to get that out soon. There's no better time than right now. So I am working on that. That's coming. So look for that. Look for more reviews. As I record this, episodes three and four have also aired. And I will be recording those reviews very soon. So stay tuned. If you want to support what I do, I've launched a new feature here on the channel. And that is the Mr. Drosty Patreon page and you're going to find the link down here in the broadcast description there's three tiers on the patreon page you can support what i do make it possible for me to produce even more of these videos to upgrade my equipment and also get benefits like early releases on videos the chance to influence what i record videos on in the future and also a discord server where we can chat history each and every day i'll do q and a's with our patreon supporters uh, you can read all about it. It's patreon.com slash Mr. Drosty. I would really, really appreciate your support. If you like my videos, if you like the channel, you can support me and what I'm doing here. So check that out. Leave a thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to the channel. And we will see you really soon with my review of episode three of Manhunt. So stay tuned.